So the first level, the lowest level, and where I, I would suggest starting for every parent is you got to be extremely curious about what they're doing online. Why do we feel like something is seriously wrong with how our kids interact with screens these days? You know, we're a, a generation that is unique. There's never been a generation like this. We grew up without unlimited access to technology, without an AI deciding what we would watch next. We grew up mostly free of technology. Like we did have technology, but we didn't depend on it. We didn't grow up with smartphones in our hands, you know, at all times that we could use and that we could bring into our bedrooms and use privately. No. At home, we had to share the desktop computer with everyone else in a shared space. So like use of technology was, was a public thing. It was not private. It was not you alone in your bedroom. That, that was not the case. So by the time these arrived, smartphones arrived, we weren't children anymore. Now, uh, as adults, what's happening with screens just seems wrong. It seems wrong. You know, things are different and they definitely won't go back to how they used to be. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it is wrong. We can certainly want for it to go back to how it used to be when we were kids without technology. Uh, but we got to look at the reality. It means that if we don't shift our expectations for this new normal, uh, we're in for a lot of struggle. We can avoid it, but we're, we're in for a lot more struggle. Last week, we, we talked about sedation. And we know nobody needs a break more than parents during this time of learning and isolating at home. So what did our parents do when they needed a break? Come on, like we're, we're not the only parents out there that need breaks, right? Like our parents needed breaks, right? Maybe they threw us outside. They said, okay, you go outside. <laughs> they told us to go, go play in the park, right? So why, why can't kids just, they live just down the street from each other. Why don't they just go and play in the park? Why do they need to meet up in that video game? Right? Why do they need to go meet up online? What is the point? They're so close to each other. What was the purpose of these meetups? Was it so that we can get the recommended amount of physical activity and get enough vitamin D, like be out there with the sun? Is that, is that why? Phones in our day, they're pretty boring. They're pretty boring when we grew up. You know, texting with T9 was so painful that it's hard to imagine being addicted, addicted to our phones. So growing up without constant access to phones shouldn't be a problem for our kids, right? Shouldn't be a problem. Like we grew up without constant access to, to digital devices. So we were fine. Like they should be fine as well. We did it. They should be able to too. They should be able to do that too. You know, we did use phones, right? And when we used phones, we used it to meet up, right? To, to chat and, um, and like the whole point of meeting up is like, uh, I don't know, maybe we're going to play some games together. Uh, maybe we're going to play with some, some of the latest toys that we've got together, right? We met because our phones were used for social connection. We used our phone to call people and go, hey, you want to go over to my place? All right. You want to go and play this, like this game together? All right, let's do it. You know, or hey, we're going to play like these toys together. You want, you want to hang out? It's like, okay, let's do that. Awesome. And so we ask like, well, why do our kids prefer video games over hanging out with friends, say, in the playground? Well, maybe, just maybe, video games are the new playground 
for our kids. Yeah, they're hanging out with friends right there. And, and they all have the same shared interest, don't they? Right? And so we're not meeting up at the playground to play with what we want to play with. We're meeting up online. So why is it such a big deal? Like when we take away their phones and their devices? Well, we're not just taking away tech from them. We're taking away their social circles because people are less around on in the physical locations and now they're more around online so it's really hard to make friends when when he, many of the people who would be your friends aren't physically at the playgrounds and further to that like what are we going to learn what will they learn like what will your kids learn when we take their devices away from them but they see us connecting with a like and this is the thing like we take devices away from them we say okay you're you're over your screen time limit stop watching the 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 youtube videos like this is ridiculous and then later after we finish dinner with them they see us we're connecting with the parent groups that we're part of on facebook like all the facebook groups that we're we're a part of this is the hypocrisy of parenting that we live in I get it. I get it. You know, we even our, our parents used to say, we want our kids to do better than ourselves. We want them to do better than, than we could do. You've heard the phrase, oh, do what I say, not what I do, right? Well, the challenge is actions speak a lot louder than words. If we want our kids to have great self control over their screen time, then we need to show them how it's done, starting with our own screen time. That's hard. <laughs> that is really, really hard. You know, uh, it's just like asking your kid like not to have a snack before dinner. And then we're heating up food from the fridge because we're hungry, right? Like if we're not willing to endure the hunger, then it can be hard for our child to see how it's done. It is very hard. To see how it's done. What do you say? What do you say when your kids, your child is watching something or playing something that you don't approve of? You know, when my kids watch an influencer that I don't approve of, like they're, they're pretty young. And so when they watch like a child influencer that I don't approve of, I tell them, you know, that show is junk. <laughs> You're not allowed to watch it. You see, for me, it's easy. It's easy to apply judgment to my kids' actions and behaviors. After all, like, we want the best for our kids, right? So we don't want them, like, filling up their minds with all this junk. But what we're learning is that, especially when what they're watching is very closely related to the interests, when we judge what they watch, before even asking why they're interested in that in the first place, what do we end up doing? We end up pushing them away, right? Pushing them away. That's what we're doing. I mean, as an adult, like, how would you feel if another adult told you that your interests were dumb and that you shouldn't be watching that junk? Or you shouldn't be playing that, that stuff. How would you feel? You'd be pretty hurt. You'd be pretty hurt. And I'm not saying it's, it's wrong. I'm just saying just because we're right, it doesn't make necessarily the actions of our kids wrong. So, for example, ah, turn off the screen. It's supper time. That's a perfectly right thing to say. I mean, you want to eat before it gets cold. But their reaction of like, oh, this is, like, why? Why do I have to do that? That's not fair. I, like, I'm almost done. I mean, we're asking them to drop whatever they're doing and then start doing what we want them to do. And so naturally, yeah, they, they feel resistant. They're like, eh, I don't want to do that. So 
the challenge is we it's a hard thing to do this is this is a painful subject we can't get our kids to make good decisions uh we can't expect good decisions from our kids while at the same time treating them like they can't make good decisions on their own like we have to make the decision for them uh you know that said i'm i'm blown away <laughs> at the resilience of kids sometimes. I mean, children are very forgiving. You tell them all day that what they're doing is wrong, but they don't hold grudges. You know, they, they smile, they come back to us. It's amazing. The problem is, over time, they learn that sharing their interests with you means that they're going to be judged. And even sometimes they'll get punished. For example, if I say, you can't watch that anymore, you're getting punished for sharing what you're doing online. So they develop a habit of hiding things from us and sharing their interests online instead. Share their interests online. You know, this is the thing about AI. Artificial intelligence is a really, really great listener. It's not there to judge your interests. It's just there to give you more of what you like so, so that you keep watching. It's, it's not there to say like, this is wrong, this is, this is right. No, it's just, you like this, how can I find you more? So. Motivational speaker, Jim Rohn, he says that we're the average. We're the average of the five people we spend the most time with. How do we make sure that we as parents are one of those five? I mean, it seems pretty obvious, right? Like we're already there. We're, we live in the same house. We, we must be the, one of the five. And there is no doubt we have a huge huge influence. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we become the ones who en end up spending more time. So there's a difference between like being in the same place versus spending the time. And we, we talked a little bit about screen time versus quality time in the past. So time, what we mean by time is quality time. And so in order to make sure that we're part of that circle, right? Those, the, the five people that they spend the most quality time with. It means that we need to show an interest in their, like in their interests, in their topics of interest. Even if at first it doesn't seem interesting at all to us. Like we're kind of like a psychologist for our own kids. We want to be insanely curious about not necessarily the, the topic, but about our kids, right? We want to be curious about them. What are the goals? Like, why are they watching this? But what are their goals? What do they hope to achieve by playing this game or being on this platform? What, what is their, their, their objectives long-term? Because when we do this, when we kind of drive a little bit deeper into the goals and we also dive a little bit into the, the interests, we also get a chance to know uh, about our child's friends as well. And that's one of the hardest things to do nowadays, because if everything's offline, if everything is in this bubble online, you, you don't even know who they're hanging out with. Uh, and before, like if you were at the playground with them, you would see like you were playing with them. It's not that you were like as a parent, it's not that our parents were super interested in playgrounds. They're like, oh man, I can't wait to play in the playgrounds. No. But they, they showed an interest in what you were doing on the playgrounds so that they could be a part of that conversation. And if that playground has moved online, then this is exact same, the, exactly the same situation. We want to be able to show that same level of interest in their digital playgrounds as our parents showed in the physical playgrounds.